everybody, this is Justin here, aka Demonic Sweaters. Also talking about Demonic Sweaters, the band, right now. If you haven't heard our album yet, check it out. It's on Spotify. It's called Is That You? It's on all the streaming services. But anyway, that's not what this video is totally about. But what I wanted to talk about today is we played a show uh, the night before last where I used electronic drums and the band didn't use any amplifiers at all. We just, well, unless you're counting the PA. So basically what we did is the guitars and bass, we just ran directly into the mixer. Uh, the guitar players are using guitar modeling pedals. I don't know the specific ones because I, I didn't look at them. But, uh, you know, when we were setting the whole thing up, I, I mentioned to the guitarist uh, to bring some kind of modeling pedal. And what we did is we plugged everything directly into the board and then we ran a monitor mix into our headphones and I used a Roland TD-07 drum module uh, connected to my Pearl uh, drum set that I converted to electronic. And uh, everything was 100% digital and electronic. And this is basically something that I've wanted to try for a long time, uh, but this was the first time really doing it. Um, I've done it in smaller situations where, you know, it was just me and one other person, but this was the first time playing with a full band like this. And uh, it was partly an experiment, but it actually worked really well. And the great thing about this is where we performed was at a place called Hemp, uh, Hidden Hemp, which is a hemp dispensary here in Brooklyn. And uh, they, you know, they're in a residential neighborhood and you can't be like super loud there. So, because it's outside too, like the back patio is outside. So what this allows us to do is basically to have a master volume on everything. So we were able to play like a full rock show at about one third the volume that it normally is, but without compromising how we were playing. Like I'm still hitting hard, you know, maybe not quite as hard as I do on acoustic drums, but everything was still pretty rocking. And I think the quality came out excellent. Unfortunately, I forgot to start one of my cameras. So my video angles are a little bit limited, but I am waiting on some more uh, people who were there in the audience to see if they could send me some clips and then I'll be able to edit something together uh, that has a lot more angles. And I got a few already and it's looking better than it did originally. Uh, but the audio recording that I got, uh, I think is excellent for what it is. All I did is I just ran a line output directly from the mixer into my Zoom uh, H1. Is this an H1? whatever this thing is, the Zoom handy H1N uh, handy recorder. And I just recorded it right onto here, uh, direct out from the mixer, and I thought it sounded really good. Now, like I said, this was my first time attempting this, so it wasn't totally perfect. Um, there was a couple of things I could have dialed in a little bit better. One of them was my crash that I had here on my right uh, was the sensitivity I had set way too high. <laughs> and like there's one part in one of our quieter songs uh, where I kind of gently tapped that crash. It was supposed to be in like a, you know, a quiet moment and it's just like this explosion. Out of nowhere and like you could see my reaction in the video uh, when I did that, it was pretty funny. But uh, that was, you know, that was kind of bad, but it wasn't terrible, you know, it was just one of those things where I could have just set up the drums a little bit better. The thing is, is I felt like I had it pretty good when I was configuring the drums in my apartment, but I must have reversed the crashes. That's what I'm thinking, is maybe one of them is more sensitive than the other. 14 inch lemon crashes, one of those, I think they're 14s. But I must have reversed those two and maybe one of them was more sensitive than the other one. 
uh, when I set them up, it wasn't quite you know behaving the same way that it was here in my apartment. Also, the kick drum, you know, because I was using all external triggers on the on the drums, and kick drum triggers can be finicky, you know, especially for external ones. Uh, so, you know, it worked good, but again, in that quiet song, when I was trying to do subtle things on the bass drum, there I did get a couple of double triggers. And that was something where I thought I had ironed all that out at home as well. But when I was moving the drums, I removed the trigger too because I found that if I leave triggers on the drums and put them in the cases and stuff, they can damage the triggers. So it's better to take them off. Um, but you know, I think just removing the trigger and then reattaching it and the fact that it was in like a slightly different position and you know, just whatever, you know, just made it react a little bit differently. But other than that, I mean, it worked pretty much perfectly throughout the rest of the show. So these are little things that you would have to think about if you're using electronic drums at, at a live event. Now, of course, mine are DIY electronic drums, you know, like if you're using a store-bought electronic drum kit, you may not have uh, these same kind of issues, you know, it's going to be more consistent when you tear down and set up again, you know, and play it like that. But overall, I think it was really cool. Um, I would totally do this again. And it was really nice having a headphone mix. You know, you can hear, I could hear my vocals perfectly when I was singing. So I felt like I was able to stay on pitch. The only thing that was a little bit weird about that is it was hard for me to tell if I was like insanely loud out into the audience or if it was like just right. But it turned out being, I think, pretty much just right. Um, you know, there were some parts where it was a little bit loud, but a lot of times people are like, you know, they always say, oh, I can't hear the vocals. Like when, and then you'll go back and listen to the video and the vocals are like the loudest thing on the recording. But I don't know. I think a lot of people are just like non-musicians. All they think about is the singing. They don't really think about the instruments. So a lot of times you'll hear those kind of comments, uh, where, you know, they wish the vocals were louder from people who don't actually play music. Um, not that they're wrong, but, uh, I just prefer to have it all balanced. I don't really like the vocals to be like the loudest thing in the mix because the music and the instruments are just as important as the singing, in my opinion. You did it. As the PA, uh, what I was using there as I was using two Simmons uh, DA uh, 110s or 112s. No, they're the 112s. Uh, the Simmons drum amplifiers that actually makes a really excellent PA. Uh, thanks to Simmons again for sending that to me a couple of years ago. Um, it's two speakers, but they can link together uh, with one single XLR, and then you only have to run to one of the speakers. And then I just had my mixer, which is a Harbinger uh, mixer. So that was really the only analog thing happening on stage. Everything else uh, was basically, you know, both guitars, like I said, were digital guitar processors. The bass, uh, Ronan was just running through a bunch of pedals. I don't think he even had a modeling uh, bass amp or anything like that. When I heard it back on the recording, it wasn't as obvious to me, but I felt like the bass and the headphones, it could have used some kind of compression or something like that to make it a little more even. Uh, next time, I think we'll probably have some kind of, you know, bass amp modeling pedal on the bass as well. Because uh, the guitars, I thought, sounded excellent. And the drums, um, the TD-07 is, is really good, you know, for what it is. It's not that expensive of a module. But you could really do this with any electronic drum kit. It doesn't have to be a Roland one. Um, you could use an Elisa's Nitro or whatever. Um, but I think it's a really cool way to play. It's not like a total replacement for playing fully acoustic drums or, you know, with real amps and all that stuff. But it just gives you a whole other, you know, way that you can perform and actually gives you a lot more places that you can perform as a rock band because you don't have to be quite as loud. You could even do a headphone concert if you wanted to this way. You could have everything turned off, no speakers, and uh, one idea I had was to have one of those little um, 
FM transmitters that you could buy for car stereos, and then everybody could tune in, you know, but of course nobody has radios anymore. That was my second thought about that. Um, so it'd probably be easier just to have like one big headphone amp or something like that, or some kind of wireless headphone broadcasting system. There'd probably be a little bit of latency that way, but uh, you know, if you're just watching and not performing, it might not be that weird. Maybe it would be really weird, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. A very cool experiment, and uh, once I get the rest of the concert footage from people in the audience, I'm gonna put together a full video and post it here on the channel. But uh, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the clips. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all really soon. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody.